know, I've never been happier. In fact, I'm quite flattered. Never before have I had so many people paying attention to me and admiring me. They come from all corners of the country and travel by just about any means to see me perform. I'd even caused several traffic slowdowns in some places when I was just passing through. Well, the townsfolk certainly do turn out. There haven't been so many bodies down at the station in years. You'd think that a famous celebrity had come to town. Sometimes I find it difficult to cope with all the overwhelming popularity. <laughs> I've always been somewhat popular, even in my earliest years. But it was never like this. Oh, it sure is great. Look at all those people, old and young, big and little people, all kinds of people. Why, if I wanted to, I bet I could run for president. Look at all those votes. Come to think of it, who's more suited to whistle-stop campaigning than I am? Come aboard, watch me, hear me as I steam right on. I have to admit it, I enjoy basking in the limelight, receiving the attention of my audience. They stand next to me to feel my warmth, or in front of me to have a friend take their picture with me. I couldn't count how many times I've been photographed, or how many newspaper and magazine articles have been written about me. My name? Well, I've been called many things. Some of them colorful nicknames. Or just simply, 759. Actually, my name is unimportant. Many people see me as a symbol. A symbol of brute force, alive and approachable, that touches all of man's senses and reaches the depths of his soul. To some, I symbolize romance, places far away, wanderlust. To those who can't see me, I call, I beckon, I lure them with my steam song as I rush headlong through the wind. Listen. Time stood still, for I was still. All the running had turned to standing. I was cast off, forsaken, forgotten. After several years passed, I moved to Steamtown in Vermont. There the seasons grew warm in summer and piercing cold in winter. Then spring came. A miracle! It was a spring like no other spring before. I was moving again. I was home again. I was alive again. It was an old and new love affair combined. It was friends who knew me before and hadn't forgotten. It was people who wanted to meet me for the first time. Old friends and new friends. It was the High Iron Company, and we would get to know each other quite well. Who were these volunteers who put in hours of labor to return me to the polished rails of the main line? They were a diversified crew, I must say, of all ages and backgrounds. A few of them were professional railroaders, but the rest were from the Merchant Marine, the Telephone Company, Education, Electronics, Students, Wall Street, you name it. These men took me apart, went over every inch of my massive hulk, testing, restoring, replacing, cleaning, hammering, welding, reassembling, painting, polishing. Oh, the work was enormous. It was my first revelation of just how much devotion I could inspire in all kinds of people. Just the idea of being on an active locomotive and the smell of the smoke and the wine and the generators just automatically brings out in your mind those things that you identify with when you hear just the word steam. I remember as a kid, off a big machine used to come through town every day. It, it stopped for no one or nothing. And a man up there was awful powerful man in that he controlled this massive machine that used to come through town. I 
I wasn't around to ride on the Crusader back in the old days or the Daylight or the Worldwide Limited or the 20th century. But I feel a kinship to all those trains and everything they stood for. When we have a Shenandoah special, Jim Thorpe annual trip, they all seem to me in the day and age that we're in now to be a, a one unit train, which is a collection of a little bit of the 20th century, a little bit of the Southern Pacific daylight and a little bit of the Broadway Limited. Honestly, I can't figure out why men put up with me at times. I'm quite self-centered and temperamental, and I demand lots of attention. Why do they do it? What causes their admiration? Where did their love begin? Where does it come from, the fascination that men have for me and my kind? The enthusiasm and admiration transcend time. Whether in a big city or in a small town, the people turn out. Some, perhaps, with nostalgic memories of their youth. Still others with a youthful curiosity to see me firsthand for the first time. When it when it's when it's running, the noises it makes, the the exhaust, the, the track noise, and everything, it it sort of speaks its own language. And if you're able to watch it, you you, you can see everything working. You can identify with the engine. More, more than you can with just about any other machine going. Yet within many people's memories, the, the thought of all those engines gone, much less just laid up, was like thinking of the sun rising in the west, it just ain't gonna happen, you know, it, it, it's impossible. And yet, the 759 is a very rare survivor, especially in the fact that it runs. was a train we were pulling something that people were waiting for the goods a company or individual ship or whoever they were this was the average freight train that delivers Mr. Consumer's goods to his door we were hauling revenue freight which is what the engine was designed for what it was built for and here what 12 years after it was retired right along with the best of the diesel that runs out there and pulls one. I guess part of it is supply and demand with me. There's the supply is about nil, and they're certainly out of production. So wherever I can find one that, that's working, I, I just want to be part of it. sailboats or fly airplanes or something well for me it's steam engines it's something that's part of America and part of people the steam locomotive you think of the steam locomotive the lure of the railroads it's something that's very romantic
This teenager is a very dramatic actor, and the railroad is quite a stage, squid stands and crossing gates. But the real actor, or real actors on the railroad, the locomotives, the steam engines are dramatic, fantastic actors. The steam locomotive really is, a, is an American invention. Uh, historically, it's an accurate statement, but I like to consider it as an American invention because of the very effective use this country put it to. The effective use? Well, let's just say that this country and we grew hand in hand. We made an impression on each other, and each was better for it. To some people, I am most impressive while in motion. They appreciate my patterns of movement. For them, there is an aesthetic quality in my rhythmic dance that can be found nowhere else. Other people derive great satisfaction just listening to me as I thunder by, stirring their souls. There are forces stirring within me, too. Listen to the pulse of my soul. The reactions that youngsters have when they see me are truly colorful, completely uninhibited. The kids' responses are are fun to watch. You can read the amount of pleasure that they get out of the thing very plainly by the expression on their faces. Uh, there's an expression of complete absorption, which you cannot fake. Once you see that expression, you don't mistake it. And they feel they're standing there, they're seeing something, and they're going back in their mind Old men with tears coming down their eyes. Old women reminiscing how their husbands wept. Go through a town and the people just hear the whistle blowing and they run out and they wave and wave. I think I wear my arm out waving at people all the time, but I never get tired of doing it. You come driving through a town at 70, 75 miles an hour. You look alongside of there, and there's the farmers and all the local people stopped and watching the engine go by. I think it's the romantic lure of the steam engine with the wailing whistle and the clickety-clack of the train going over the rails, the pall of smoke after the train is done out of sight. I don't care where we go, it still sends chills up my spine every time we go across a grand crossing. Great men have ridden with us down the twin rails through history. It was these men who spanned the waters of powerful rivers. It was these men who bore through the cold depths of defiant mountains. But of all the men who welded the expanse of the nation together with the railroad, this man was most exalted. In his hand, he controls the explosive energy of steam. And this man mixes fire and water together to give me life, to send me in motion thundering down the high iron. Yes, the engineer is a folk hero, the envy of old and young alike. In his legendary time, he has flirted with danger, sped past 100 miles an hour in routine fashion, and deftly held the reins on the fury of thousands of horses. He has been the idol of many a young boy who would have given anything to trade places with a man who rode high on the steel rails, who waved and called with a might of steam itself. I'm a rail fan. My wife, when I first got married, thought I was crazy. Now she puts up with me. I, I think it's something that was born in, in my blood. I grew up on a railroad. You can really put it into words why you enjoy 
uh, riding behind a steam engine doing 50 miles an hour and getting cinders in your eyes and smelling smoke. If people enjoy looking at a piece of machinery that isn't a piece of machinery, you know, it's an a living, breathing thing. I think people get the biggest enjoyment out of just seeing it and hearing it. And they see 1,100 people on a train happy. And you look out on the side of the tracks and you see thousands of people out there being very happy. <laughs> I guess that the strongest reward comes from having the engine perform, have it go up or shoot curve two times in a row with no question about it either time. But that kind of reward to a mechanical man was, was a fantastic reward. Yes, to some it was a reward, but for me it was a grueling challenge. The Horseshoe Curve, a magnificent railroad landmark in the Alleghenies in mid-Pennsylvania. In the golden era of steam, two or three of my kind would have been used to assault the grade, and I was trying it alone. Could I do it? Thousands were on hand to see for themselves, and the bets were made. was dropping 13, 12, 11 miles per hour. 11 miles per hour as I thrust myself upward. One slip and I'd be finished. I had triumphed. I had conquered the horseshoe alone. Wherever we run in the wind and call from afar, you will come, knowing why perhaps, or perhaps not. You will come to watch, to listen, to have your imagination swept away by the splendor of steam. Thank you. 